Hello, welcome to Lei's Looking Glass. I'm Lei. The moon has always carried an air of mystery and long symbolized many of humanity's hopes and dreams. But do you know that the moon is not a natural celestial body? There is, in fact, mounting evidence suggesting that the moon is likely an advanced man-made satellite. In 1950, Dr. Hugh Percy Wilkins proposed in his book that the moon is hollow. Everything points to a more or less hollow nature of the crust of the moon within some 20 to 30 miles of the surface. Multiple lines of scientific evidence suggest that the moon is an artificial object and that it is hollow inside. Scientists have found that the moon is unusually large compared to the planet it orbits. Its diameter is 27% of Earth's. Compare this with other planets. Mars' largest moon has a diameter that's only 0.34% of the Mars. Jupiter's largest moon has a diameter 3.5% of Jupiter. The diameter of Saturn's largest moon is 3.75% of Saturn. All other planetary satellites are under 5% of the size of their parent planets. The moon at 27% is an extreme outlier, suggesting that it is not a typical celestial body. Although Earth's gravitational pull on the moon is far weaker than the sun's, the moon stays in orbit around Earth instead of being pulled away to the sun. If the moon were a natural body entering the solar system, it should have been captured by the strong gravitational pull of the massive planet Jupiter, not Earth. This raises doubts about the moon's natural origin. In all these cases, it becomes clear that the moon does not rotate in the same manner as natural satellites. The moon co-orbits with Earth in a synchronous pattern, and its speed is far greater than expected for a body of its size and distance. Its axis of rotation does not align with Earth's. It also shows the same face to Earth, whether it's a full moon, crescent, or new moon. It doesn't roll like a wheel along its orbital path. No matter when you observe it, the moon never appears to turn. While natural satellites typically follow elliptical orbits, the moon's orbit is almost perfectly circular, a characteristic shared only by artificial satellites. Seismologists study the Earth's interior through its seismic waves. Similarly, scientists have used moonquakes to investigate the moon's interior. During the Apollo missions, astronauts installed high-sensitivity seismometers on the lunar surface. These instruments were so sensitive that they could record the astronauts' footsteps. On November 20th, 1969, Apollo 12's ascent module was deliberately crashed onto the moon. A moonquake followed and the moon ran for over 55 minutes. The shaking started small, grew stronger over eight minutes, then gradually faded over nearly an hour. Shock waves traveled across the moon's surface, not into its interior, just like vibrations on a hollow metal sphere. This strongly suggests that the moon is hollow with only a surface shell. Later, Apollo 13 used a rocket booster to impact the moon near the Apollo 12 seismometer, producing a moonquake that lasted three hours and 20 minutes. Only a hollow sphere could produce such a prolonged and resonant vibration. According to the NASA report, Apollo 16 and the moon's surface Seismology data revealed a 40-mile thick, hard layer inside the lunar shell. Scientists found that vibrations at this depth traveled at 6 miles per second, a speed achievable only in metals, not rock. This suggests a metallic shell lies beneath the moon's surface, with a loose 10-20 to mile thick rock layer above it. NASA scientists constructed various models based on data, including one where the moon is a hollow sphere made of high-purity titanium. All natural celestial objects, like planets and moons, have their own magnetic fields. Earth's magnetic field, for example, comes from its core. 
Earth has a solid inner core and a liquid outer core. The liquid part moves around quickly, creating electric currents, which then generate a magnetic field. But the Moon is completely different. Based on Moon rock samples brought back to Earth and direct measurements of the Moon's magnetic field, scientists found that the Moon's magnetic strength is less than one thousandth of Earth's. In other words, it's particularly non-existent. This suggests that the Moon lacks an inner core and is likely hollow inside. The Moon's average density is about 3.33 grams per cubic centimeter, nearly 50% lower than Earth's 5.5 grams. But here's the puzzle. According to NASA scientist Richard Lewis in his 1976 book Apollo's Cosmic Journey, the lunar rocks brought back by Apollo 11 and 12 were actually denser than typical Earth rocks. Lunar samples had densities between 3.2 and 3.4 grams per cubic centimeter, compared to Earth's rocks at around 2.7 to 2.8. So how can the Moon be so much less dense overall, even though its surface rocks are heavier? American Nobel Prize winning chemist and planetary scientist Dr. Harold Urey had a bold answer. The Moon might be hollow at its core. Planets and moons like Earth form by slowly collecting dust and rocks from space. As they grow, heavier materials sink to the center, while lighter ones rise, forming layers like the core, mantle, and crust. Deep underground, it gets so hot that some rocks melt into lava. The movement of this hot material causes pressure, which can crack the crust. These cracks lead to earthquakes, and when lava escapes through them, volcanoes form. So on natural celestial bodies, earthquakes and volcanoes are normal. But the Moon is different. If it were a natural object, we'd expect signs of a volcanic activity. Yet for over 3 billion years, the Moon has been geologically silent. To this day, not a single volcanic eruption has been observed, something that challenges what we know about how natural planets and moons behave. On Earth, volcanic rocks are made of crystal-like minerals that form when molten rock cools down. So it makes sense to expect natural planets and moons to have similar types of crystal-rich rocks. But the rocks brought back from the Apollo missions don't look like that at all. Scientists found that they are all meteorites, rocks from space that usually don't have clear mineral crystals. So what's going on? Did meteorites impact on the moon destroy or bury all the original minerals? Could those minerals have somehow broken down into meteorite-like rocks, even though the moon has no wind, water, or life to cause weathering? Or were moon rocks always just meteorites to begin with? None of these explanations really make scientific sense, and that's the mystery. Craters are the most prominent features on the Moon and are widely believed to be the result of meteor impacts. But meteors don't only strike the Moon, all celestial bodies experience impacts. On Earth, these craters tend to be much deeper relative to their size, often with steep inner walls. The Moon's craters, however, are strangely shallow. Take the Gagarin Crater, for example. It spans nearly 265 kilometers across, but is only 4.8 kilometers deep. In fact, even the largest craters on the Moon rarely exceed 6 kilometers in depth. This odd shallowness suggests the Moon's surface may be reinforced by something incredibly tough, almost like it's protected by an inner layer of armor. In other words, the Moon's crust doesn't behave like natural planetary rock. As you go deeper, it becomes so rigid that below 6 kilometers, it might not be rock at all, but something more like super-alloy steel. Scientists have long been debating about the origin of the Moon. Some believe in the capture theory, that the Moon was captured by Earth's gravity. 
Others propose the co-formation theory, that the Earth and Moon formed together from the same material. And there is the fission theory, that the Moon split off from the Earth. However, research shows that the Moon is older than Earth. The oldest lunar rocks date back 4.6 billion years, while Earth's oldest rocks are only 3.9 billion years old. Moreover, six elements found in moon rocks do not exist on Earth, something no existing theories can explain. More and more clues suggest that the moon might not be a natural satellite at all. Its hollow structure, strange magnetic field, and reflective surface hang at something artificial, perhaps even a massive metallic construct placed in orbit long ago. But if it's true, then who built it? Could prehistoric humans have created something so advanced? As unbelievable as that sounds, the idea that the moon was built by an ancient human civilization actually appears in Chinese historical records. A popular 9th century book from the Tang Dynasty, Youyang Zazu, tells a curious story. During the Da He era, a man named Zheng Renben and his cousin, a scholar named Wang, went hiking in the Song Mountains, now part of Henan province. Back then, the area was covered in dense forest, and the two men got lost in a deep, quiet valley. As night approached, they spotted a man in all white, sleeping in the grass. They called out for directions, but he didn't respond. After several tries, he finally sat up and waved them over. When they asked where he was from, the man replied, Did you know the moon is made from seven kinds of precious materials? It's shaped like a palette. The bright areas you see are where sunlight hits its raised surfaces. A long time ago, 82,000 households worked together to build the moon, and I was part of one of them. The man opened his bundle to reveal tools like chisels and axes, along with a meal made from rice and powdered jade. He offered the food to the travelers, saying, It won't make you immortal, but you'll never fall ill again. Then he pointed them to the way out and vanished without a trace. Since then, phrases like jade axe for building the moon and moon builders have appeared in Chinese literature. So, was it just a tale, or could it reflect a hidden truth? Some spiritual cultivators with higher perception claim to have seen that the moon was indeed built during a prehistoric era, when human technology far surpassed today's. I'll explain more in detail in the next program. Please don't forget to subscribe for the update. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.